Hi guys, yasas, que calos irsate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making the instant pot version of lachano dolmades, which are cabbage rolls. They're going to be served and made in a Greek lemony sauce, an avgolemono sauce. So delicious, hearty, and so simple to make thanks to the instant pot. We're going to get started by um, cooking the cabbage in here. Now, I have I had tested this recipe obviously and I cooked the cabbage in here and I will say that there are a lot of pros to this but there are also a few cons. The pros are that it's ready in like 10 minutes. I mean it takes a, a few minutes for cabbage to boil on the stove and remove leaf by leaf. But and also the other pro is that your house will not smell so much like cabbage like when you're boiling it on the stove and you know it's steaming away and that smell is permeating through your whole house. But it is a little bit more tedious to peel the leaves off once it's pressure cooked and you'll see what I mean once we get started. If you don't have an instant pot, why not? <laughs> it's a great tool to have. I'm not a fan of kitchen uh, apply extra kitchen appliances, but this I love. If you don't have one and you're thinking of getting one, I'll put the link down below. If you have a pressure cooker, cooker instead, you could use that instead of the instant pot. Let's get started. Okay, so I have a head of green cabbage here. That's what I'm using. Savoy cabbage is the best if you can find it because the leaves aren't packed as tight. Um, I can't find it that easily, so my rule of thumb is get whatever is easily available. Don't go, you know, looking for it in different supermarkets, but if it is available, you know, near, near you, then get that one. So we're coring, we're removing the core of the cabbage. This is going to help the leaves come out much easier later on. But it's kind of dangerous, so do this very carefully. That's all you need to do. Now I have this trivet over here that you can get in a kitchen supply store or on Amazon. I'll put the link. You're going to need it so that way the cabbage cooks, you know, easily. Put this core side down with about two cups of water. I'm going to put the lid on and seal it and I'm going to pressure cook it or I'm going to set it to pressure cook on high for nine minutes. Okay, so while that's happening, we're going to prepare the filling. Now it's set to pressure cook at nine minutes, but it does take a few minutes for the machine to build up the pressure. So over here, the recipe calls for one pound of ground beef, but I usually buy my ground beef in packs of two pounds. This is almost two pounds, so I'm just going to use all of it. And the remaining filling that's going to be left over, I'm just going to make little meatballs out of it and cook it straight in the pot. I have an onion over here that I finally chopped, and I cooked it in about three, four tablespoons of olive oil until it was nice and soft and golden. This gets, um, gets that bite out of the oven onion out and it just mellows it out and I prefer it. If you don't care for that and you just want a, an extra shortcut, you don't have to cook the onion in the oil, but it does make it taste better. So I'm going to add two teaspoons of salt. If you're using one pound of ground beef or ground lamb or ground chicken, then use one teaspoon of salt. These are four garlic cloves that I've grated some black pepper, and about two tablespoons of dried dill. There's one, there's two. The herbs really add lots of freshness and flavor. And I'm just going to mix everything up before I add the rice. But before I do that, actually, I have some parsley here, a big bunch. It's a big handful that I've just removed the leaves from the stems and I put in a bowl of water so all of the dirt can sink down to the bottom. And I'm just going to finely chop this. So add the parsley to the mixture and mix everything well before you add the rice. I'm going to switch to my hands because it's going to be so much easier to do this. If you want to put on a pair of gloves, you can go ahead and do that. I wash my hands so many times a day so they're nice and clean. Okay, and have a cup of basmati rice because again, this is a double batch of meat. The recipe calls for half a cup, so keep that in mind. 
And I do have a vegetarian version um, with a vegetarian filling on the blog. You can definitely use that instead of the meat version if you want to keep it vegetarian. And that's it. That's all you need for the meat filling. It's ready. We're going to move on to the next step as soon as the cabbage is done. So the cabbage pressure cooked for nine minutes and then when I was testing this recipe what I did was I let it slow release for about 10 minutes and then I opened the valve and I let it I let the remaining pressure release and that way the steam actually ended up cooking the cabbage to just what it needed to be cooked at. This time I thought let me just quick release because I'm doing this video and I have to do a bunch of things afterwards. Make sure you don't do that. Don't do the quick release because the center of the cabbage will not cook completely and then you won't be able to use the leaves because if it's not cooked it's not soft, soft enough to roll up. So this is going to get used up for cabbage rice or something else and I'm not going to have as many cabbage rolls as I would have had if I would have done the slow release and allowed it to slowly cook in the steam that was in there. It's going to be fine because I'm still going to use the remaining filling to make little meatballs and it's going to be delicious. But this makes about 15 rolls, which is a good amount. Right now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It probably makes about 16 or 17 actually. I just have 12 and a lot of them were torn up because of that little mistake. But I like making mistakes on here because if I make them then you won't. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, so basically once it's done, then you let it quick release, take it out, and you start to peel away the layers of cabbage. If they're really torn up, you can use those layers on the bottom just to line the bottom of your Instant Pot. I still like to keep the little trivet inside just to hold everything in place. And then you're just going to want to lay the leaves out, cut off that little, the, the thick stem on the bottom, just like a little triangle of it, so that way it rolls up easily. Honestly, it doesn't bother me. I like um, the hardiness of it, but if you don't like it, cut that little piece off. Put a heaping tablespoon of the filling on the bottom and then roll it up and set it aside. Once they're all rolled up and filled, you can layer them in the Instant Pot. And then if you have any leftover filling like I do, just roll them up and make little meatballs and put those on top as well. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take about six cups of chicken broth. You can use vegetable broth or water. Chicken broth is my favorite because it's so flavorful. Pour that on top of all of the, the cabbage rolls and sprinkle them with a little bit of salt, maybe like a half teaspoon or so. Put the lid on the machine again and set the valve to be sealed shut. Then you're going to pressure cook it on high for 15 minutes and you're going to let it slow release for 10 minutes and then release the remaining pressure. Once that's done, we're going to make the avgolemono sauce. All right, so the pressure cooker is done cooking. Once the steam is released, go ahead and open it. And as you will see, the meatballs are all fully cooked. And you don't have to put the meatballs in there, by the way, if you want to just keep this kind of clean. But this is a family meal, and none of us mind. We actually love them. Take a look at the cabbage rolls and the meatballs. Like I said, they're perfectly cooked. And then we do have some sauce in there or some soup in there, which is going to help make more sauce which is like the best part of this so I've juiced some lemons I like my um, my avgolemono extra lemony you can put as much as you want about a quarter to all the way up to half a cup is good I have some more chicken stock in here this is about two cups of it I'm gonna add the lemon juice in here that's about half a cup because like I said I like it lemony but taste and you know taste and see <laughs> you don't want to overdo it you could always add more. A heaping teaspoon of cornstarch. The cornstarch is going to help thicken it a little bit more. And then we're going to need three egg yolks. So I'll save the whites in the bowl to make some cookies with them. And then I'll put the yolks in the broth mixture. Now, I'm not gonna, I usually do temper this mixture, but since I have the chicken stock in there, the eggs should be fine. I, if I were to dig up to get some more of the hot broth um, from the Instant Pot, it's so deep and the broth is so deep down in there, I'm gonna have to disturb everything and they're gonna start to fall apart. I wanna keep everything intact. So I'm just gonna pour the egg mixture into the Instant Pot. And then I'm just going to swirl it around a little bit so it goes everywhere. 
So then I'm just going to cancel the pressure cooker setting, which is already done anyway, and I'm going to set, set it to the saute function, and I'm going to let this cook until it begins to bubble and thicken a little bit. It is going to thicken more as it sits. Once it thickens a little bit, it's going to be ready to, ready to serve, so make sure you turn the machine off so that way it doesn't continue to cook and, you know, overcook and mush everything up in there. Once it's done, we're going to put it in a plate and it's going to be ready to serve. And I saute it open, uncovered. You can cover it and saute it, but if you seal it, then you're going to have to wait until the pressure is released again and we don't want that extra step. I leave it uncovered and that helps me keep an eye on it. I'm going to clean up and in the meantime, this should be ready in just a few minutes. So just like that, the meal is ready. Now, as soon as it started bubbling, I just let it bubble for about a minute and then I turned it off because the residual heat is gonna continue to cook it. And like I said, the rice that's in that, plus a little bit of cornstarch and the egg yolks all together will continue to thicken the sauce and you don't want it to become so thick that you're left with hardly any sauce. If that does happen, I mean, the eight cups of broth should be enough, but you could always add a little bit more later on with maybe a little bit more lemon juice if you prefer. Go ahead and put it in a bowl and you can sprinkle, not sprinkle, drizzle a little bit of extra virgin cold pressed Greek olive oil. We have some in the shop. If you'd like to buy some that comes straight from Crete, from my dad's village, if you want to check it out, head on over to the website and, and get on the shop and buy some. It's so good. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil on there. You can serve it with a lemon wedge, some toasted bread. Can't wait to try it. It's time for the taste test. and it breaks right away. That's how you know that it's perfectly cooked. The filling inside is nice and light. As you see, you don't have to like saw through it, which is a good sign. You want the filling to be nice and light. Mm. So comforting. So flavorful, bright and zesty from the lemon. It has just the right amount. The sauce is nice and light. It's like a soup almost. I think you guys are going to love it. This one takes me back to my childhood. Every time I'm visiting my mom and dad in New York, my mom always has a batch of this ready to go. She makes them ahead of time, assembles everything, and she freezes them. Um, I'll put those freezer instructions on the blog post. The exact measurements are going to be on the website, DemetriusDishes.com. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if you have any more Instant Pot uh, recipe requests, also post them down in the comments, and I'll see you back here next time. Yes, us.